This is the Genesis Electrified G80, which is a large electric sedan that faces off against some strong competition, like Audi's e-tron GT, Mercedes-Benz EQE, and the BMW i5. I've been driving it for the last week with my family of three to see if this stately looking beast gives its rivals a run for its handling and luxury features. Stay watching to find out. There's only one model for the electric G80, the Luxury, and it's going to cost you just under $146,000 before on-road costs. That places it firmly within the big player's market, but you get a ridiculous amount of features in this that it doesn't feel too cheeky. Some of those features include heated and ventilated front seats, heated steering wheel, heated rear outboard seats, plus retractable sun blinds, and Genesis also throws in some sweeteners for ownership, which I'll touch upon later. The full specs are in my written review at carsguide.com.au if you want more info. With its rounded nose and solid body size, this leans more towards a luxurious saloon aesthetic than a sports car vibe. But you do get a good hint of that powerful prowess that this car has with the turbine-like 19-inch alloys, quad LED lights at the front and the swoopy rear. The interior looks very handsome with the tan quilted Napa leather seats that feature natural dyes. I'm not usually a fan of brown on brown in a car, but the suede-like headliner and the color of the trims actually makes it look very polished inside. The only thing that I don't love is this forged wood-like panel. It doesn't look like wood to me, it looks more like that rainbow pattern you get when you mix oil on water. It's not as sexy as the Audi or the Beamer, but I would argue that it looks statelier and more refined. I especially love the Matera Blue paintwork because it's meant to be designed to look like the changing colors of a sea and it's just gorgeous. It's pretty practical in here because you get lots of head and leg room in this, which is great, but it is a low car to get in and out of. So I did enjoy having the comfort access function, which just slides your seat back just for easier access. The comfort factor in here cannot be downplayed. It is very luxurious and the seats are beautiful to sit in on a longer trip. I really liked having the massage function on the driver's seat and to be fair I did put it on every single time I drove not just long trips but you get the heated and ventilated functions like I mentioned and the heated steering wheel. It's just comfort city. The individual storage is pretty good with a good sized glove box and middle console and the usual drink bottle holders. But the utility tray that has the wireless charging pad is a little bit awkward to get your phone in and out of. There's quite a lot happening with this center console with manual buttons, touch pads and rotary dials. I would have preferred it if these two were separated a little bit further because my hand naturally goes to the e-shifter rather than the menu selector. Other than that, it's a very intuitive system to use. The 14 and a half inch touchscreen multimedia system looks great and again, easy to use. I was surprised though that it only has wide Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as it's missing out on a faster USB-C port, but you do get two USB-A ports as well as a 12 volt port to choose from. The built-in satellite navigation uses a mixture of three functions, touchpad, press buttons, and a scrolling feature. And it feels a bit convoluted to flip between all three. Other than that, it's still good to have. The back seat carries the comfort from the front. It feels very luxurious back here. It does feel more like a four-seater than a five-seater though with how you feel tucked into the car. And that feeling is further enhanced by this middle console and the cockpit-like controls you get with it. I mean, seriously, there's a lot happening back here. These buttons control the screens on the back of the seat, the heated seat function, and the retractable sunblind at the rear, among other things. You only get one single USB-A port and two audio jacks if you want to hook up a couple of headsets. I really like though that you have individual power buttons for the screens. So say you don't want to watch what your passenger's watching, you can just turn off your screen. I like that I can entertain my son on a longer trip with the video system, but you can't just hook up a phone and play Netflix or Disney on it. You have to have an actual video file on some sort of external hard drive or thumb drive. That does limit its usability for me personally, but still handy for a longer trip. Now with this setup, 
my son was in heaven this week, but I was in a little bit of hell. Back seaters can control the music and climate control of the front seat. Now you can actually disconnect the climate control on this panel here, but I couldn't figure out how to do it on the touch screens. So this week, all week, it's been quite jarring with a sprinkle of demonic child laughter in the back seat for me. And I kind of feel like the designers maybe don't have children. There are Isofix child seat mounts on the outboard seats plus three top tethers, but this isn't the sort of car that you put three child seats in anyway. Two seats are definitely gonna fit best, but you do have enough room for a zero to four rearward facing child seat to be installed to if need be. This boot is interesting because it's actually quite small for the class at 354 liters. And the stepped shaping at the back means you can't fit really big bulky bits of luggage, but I had plenty of room for my stuff and groceries this week. I really enjoyed using the power tailgate with its proximity feature too. This has a fully electric powertrain with a big lithium ion battery that has an 87.2 kilowatt hour capacity and two electric motors, one on each axle. It's an all wheel drive with a maximum power output of 272 kilowatts and 700 newton meters worth of torque. Yep. This baby has the goods and it delivers them beautifully on the road. It can do zero to hundred kilometers per hour in just 4.9 seconds. The G80 comes with a great driving range of up to 520 kilometers. The official combined power consumption is 19.1 kilowatt hour, but I actually averaged 17.2 kilowatt hour this week, which I thought was pretty good considering how much open road driving I did. This has four regen braking levels with the highest enabling one pedal driving. The regen braking is on the right side of firm and when you're going down a mountain, you're going to gain battery percentage. This has a type two charging port with a CCS DC connector. And that means that you can hook it onto a fast charger. It will even accept the faster speeds of an ultra fast 350 kilowatt system. And on that system, you can get from 10% to 80% in as little as 22 minutes. If you were to hook onto a smaller system, say an 11 kilowatt one, you'd probably see that charging time creep up to eight hours. This also has a vehicle to load function, which means that you can hook on bigger appliances to charge while on the go. A really cool feature though, is that the roof are actually solar panels, which means that you get passive charging while on the go or parked. I have loved driving this. It's got plenty of power and the distribution of that power feels really well balanced. Even though the regen braking is quite firm, it never once feels jolting or jerky. It's really lovely to drive. The ride comfort in this is absolutely top notch and up there with the best. And even at higher speeds, you get very, very little wind and road noise. There hasn't really been any issues with parking because of the top notch 360 degree view camera system. The only thing you're going to notice is the five meter length when you hit a skinny car park ramp. But other than that, very easy to park. The G80 comes stuffed with safety features and just like its cousins and stable mates, I really like the blind spot view monitor, which pops a video feed of your blind spot onto the instrument panel. I also really like the safe exit assist. I always find this a very handy feature for an urban environment. This comes with a maximum five star ANCAP safety rating from testing done in 2021. It also has a whopping 10 airbags, including a front center airbag and side chest protecting airbags in both rows, not just the front. The full safety specs are in my detailed written review at carsguide.com.au. The G80 comes with a five year unlimited kilometer warranty, as well as an eight year warranty on the battery. Plus you do enjoy complimentary servicing for up to five years or 75,000 kilometers, whichever occurs first. It is usual to see that servicing term a bit longer for an EV, but free is free. You can also get an at home wall charger installed on purchase or a ChargeFox subscription, which gives you free charging for an additional five years. 
really like how Genesis seems to be market leaders with their customer first approach to ownership. And it's very, very unusual to see luxury brands like this offer anything complimentary. So that's a really nice touch. The Genesis Electrified G80 Luxury comes feature laden and has great ongoing costs. This thing handles superbly on the road, has a very luxurious cabin and has enough power to satisfy. The boot and cabin space are on the smaller size for a sedan of this class, but this is a damn fine example of what an EV sedan can be. So this earns an 8.9 out of 10 from me. My son doesn't want to hand this one back and I know there's going to be tears for the loss of those screens and his power. So this naturally gets a 20 out of 10 from him. The full review is at carsguide.com.au if you want more details and I'll see you next week.